Thank you all for coming and being so enthusiastic. And I haven't even said a word, so I hope it keeps up. T talking to my agent, we were here before, and I thought I should have a drink because we're sitting here waiting and, and we're at the bar. And she said, no, no, no drinks before the talk. Well, I think the talk has begun now, right? So, okay. So since it's not before the talk, um, could I get a scotch? <laughs> uh, is that, I mean, really, uh, one ice cube, please? Okay, thank you. So the book is called Subliminal. And what does that mean? Well, it means below the threshold, in this case, below the threshold of consciousness. The point of the book is that there are many other things in your environment that do control your mind, and the way we experience the world is largely driven by this unconscious part uh, of, of constructing uh, your experience. Our memory is not a record of what you experience, your vision is not a record, and your social judgment is not a record, but it's a construction that your unconscious and your imagination put together from limited data using things like context, expectation, desire, prior knowledge, prior belief, and a lot of complicated things that, that are not directly related to the actual data that's taken in. Okay, look at this one, this photo, this person, male or female? Who says male? Who says female? All right, look at the other one, who says male? Who says female? Okay, they're, they're identical, same person. And the difference is that uh, the one on your left has more contrast. So the moral of all this is that our vision is not objective, but it's constructed by our minds and employing things like context, prior knowledge, belief, and desire. Now, social perception, as I've said, is, uh, works along similar lines. So our brains, just as they had to learn to or evolve to take in visual information quickly, make judgments based on limited information, do the same with other people in our society. If you see bus drivers, for instance, you don't want to have to study each one and go, what profession is this? Uh, what am I, how am I supposed to interact with this person? Or especially here in New York, if you see policemen, you don't want to have to think about that. You, you just have to know what you're supposed to do and what their role is and what your role is. But when we see people like politicians, for instance, or business people who we, whom we don't really know very well, we also, our brains automatically use the filling in tricks and, and, and use context to give us a feeling that we have a feeling for these people that goes beyond what we really know, beyond the information that we really have. Let me show you, for example, how context is used. So you, this is, you see, look in the checkerboard, you probably perceive the square B as being um, a white square and the square A as being a, a black square and that their square A is darker than square B. That's because of the context that you're viewing it in. But actually, watch this, if I take that context away, you'll see that they're actually the same color. So these are, these are little favors your brain does for you to make life easier, but it's an optical illusion because it's not really truth. It's not real reality. It's your imaginated, imagine, imagined, where is that scotch? Imagined constructed <laughs> reality. So the point is, we construct our vision, we construct our social perception, we make up what we think about candidates. We don't have to worry about it. You don't have to consciously put it all together. Your brain unconsciously does the calculation and produces this from that, and it makes it 3D as well. A lot of uh, scientists believe that our, what we call our superior intelligence evolved for the purposes of social inter complex social interactions. So the, 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 the thought is that all of these effects are coming from an evolutionary uh, for evolutionary reasons. We're, you know, we're, this is stuff that evolved thousands of years ago and we just have to live with it today the way we are. And maybe over thousands of years it will change. So let me just end with this quote from, by Carl Jung who I say I don't necessarily endorse a lot of what he said, but I love this. These subliminal aspects of everything that happens to us may seem to play very little part in our daily lives, but they are the almost invisible roots of our conscious thoughts. Thank you.